Thank you, Caitlin. Um, yeah, Caitlin's my little, very proud of that. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I'm Katie. I live in like the St. Louis, Missouri area. Um, I graduated from Franciscan in 2017. Um, and I'm married and um, I have a daughter who's like trying really hard to not go to sleep right now in the next room over. Um, her name is Avila. Um, yeah, and my time in Stella, just like my journey to being Stella, everybody that I encountered in Stella was just super, oh, Anna Slope is from St. Louis. You live in St. Louis. We should like see each other in the parking lot or something, social distance. Um, that is really exciting. Like no one from Franciscan lives in St. Um, I actually just moved here, but yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I live in like Darden Prairie, like St. Charles County. Um, so the women like that were in Stella when that were specifically the senior class when I was a freshman, they just like really caught me off guard. And like, I just, I just wanted to be them. They were like, unlike anything I'd ever encountered before. Um, I did grow up in Houston. So like in a huge, like Stella for any community. Um, and um, I don't know, I just loved the girls in Stella and they just always seemed different than like anything I'd have, I've ever known. Um, and I think joining Stella really changed like, I'm so dramatic, but like really changed the trajectory of my life. Like I was just kind of a mess freshman year and was going like making bad decisions left and right my freshman fall. And so joining household in the spring of my freshman year really just, I think, got me on, on a much better path. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys about being a warrior tonight. And that is like one of the biggest things that stood out to me about these women when I wanted to join Stella. Um, and well, like Caitlin and Taylor are probably the only people left that know me here. But if you guys did know me and you asked me to talk about being a warrior years ago, like when I was on campus, I would have probably given this like super intense, like fire you up talk um, about how we need to be bold and be fierce and spiritual warfare and how we have to stand up for one another. And those things are all true, but I like don't have that in me right now. And um, I think like in my reflecting, over the years, and especially in the last few weeks since I knew I was going to talk to you guys about what being a warrior means, I've just realized that it's so much more than just being tough or being strong. Um, so, like I said, I looked up to a lot of examples of warriors and household. The um, being a warrior was like the theme of my Twinkle retreat or the like Stella retreat when I was a Twinkle, which was like the biggest disaster in Stella retreat history. It was just like really awful. Um, the short version is that we actually got inducted the night before retreat. So they, but they told us to still act like twinkles, even though we had just gotten inducted and we like, it just went like horribly wrong and it ended with them like telling us they didn't want us in the household and it was really bad. So, um, but, uh, there was this one girl that like, um, I hope she doesn't ever watch the recording of this, but she scared the crap out of me. She was just like so fierce and intense. And um, she gave a talk on retreat about how she basically like had to be a warrior in her life. And it wasn't really like her decision or anything noble. Like she just had to be a warrior based on things that happened in her life. Um, and that really stood out to me and I wanted to be a lot like her. Um, and I think probably all of us know somebody in household that really embodies this like warrior like strength. Um, and, and that was probably a reason that maybe some of you were drawn into this household. Um, so the more I've strived to be a warrior since then, I have to admit that, like, I think a lot of pride went into it. Um, we want to be, like, when we say we want to be a warrior, um, especially in Stella, it comes with this almost, like, cool connotation. Like, we get to wear camo, and we get to be kind of badass, and, um, we want to, like, I don't know, it just can be really tempting to say, like, I want to be like that, I want to call others on, I want to fire people up for the faith. I want to be a warrior for the faith and I want to get people to heaven. Um, and that's not a bad thought or a bad desire at all. Um, but there's more to that and it's two sided. Um, we can't just have this narrative of like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go out and change the world and I'm going to do this because we're just saying I over and over and over again. And we sometimes, um, when we want to be a warrior, we have to actually step aside and let other people fight for us. Um, and I think that's kind of like a lesser glam. It's like a lesser recognized quality of being a warrior is the times when we have to step aside and let ourselves be fought for. Um, 
I feel this in a really w real way in my life right now, uh, reflecting on what it means to be a warrior and like praying over what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, I just like haven't felt a lot of strength in myself recently and I, I haven't felt like I've been a super successful warrior for our faith or even for my sisters, especially the ones that I still keep in touch with. Um, but I opened up my, it, for, looking for inspiration for tonight, I was hoping I would find something magical. And I like dug out my twinkle journal, um, which only has a few things tucked into it, which one is a letter from Caitlin, yours truly. And uh, randomly, the only paper that I have from intensity is the warrior week, like the scripture for every day and my covenant. Um, but I opened up my twinkle journal to try to like, like praying to God, I would find something about being a warrior. And so my very first entry in my twinkle journal, which is day number one of intensity, um, February 2014 says, after reflecting on it, I think the part that strikes me most about the covenant is the part about us living as warriors that are defending one another in battle. This idea of protecting a sister when she falls. I need that in my life and I feel like I fall all the time and then I get left behind. I need to feel secure and protected and fought for. I think my life could change drastically if I could face situations head on confident that I'm not alone. I wonder how many times I've been afraid to fight sometimes because I'm ultimately afraid of falling behind and being left back. So that's a little dramatic, but um, it just had me like dwelling on this idea of falling behind. And especially as we are like women warriors, um, we pride ourselves on like being on the front lines of the battle. Um, but we all do fall behind sometimes. And this was a really good reminder. And falling behind can look like so many different things, um, whether it's like struggling or failing in school or um, struggling with friendships or relationships, um, or if you have like a feeling of unpopularity or you feel like nobody can relate to you or like mental health. Um, like, and no matter what circumstance has led you there, I think we've all like had that experience of feeling like we're alone and, and somewhat left behind. Um, but the sisterhood of, sorry, my daughter is like banging on her wall. <laughs> She's cracking me up. Um, but that feeling of um, falling behind, like we don't have to experience that because we have this beautiful sisterhood of, um, of Stella Marie. And we don't have to feel this way. And I, I went back and I watched the talk from the last few weeks or the talks from the last few weeks. And um, Allie's talk about living out our covenant to one another really stood out to me. And um, as Allie said, our households, all households are both communal and they're personal. So they're communal because we're called to grow as a community of sisters to lift each other up. But then they're also personal because we're called to that spiritual like interior growth in our own lives and um, how beautifully that echoes Stella because um, we're the best because we have our covenant to one another, um, but also our covenant to Christ. Um, and so, and so in thinking about what it means to be a warrior and how sometimes, sometimes you're the one that needs to let yourself be fought for. Um, I was reflecting on our personal growth, the personal aspect of households and um, how that kind of fits with the first part of our covenant, our covenant to Jesus. Um, there will be times that you don't have it in you to stand up for the faith. Um, and that's okay. There's times that you're going to need to be carried and that's okay. That doesn't mean you're any less of a, of a warrior. If you need to be carried or fought for more than you can fight at that given time. Um, and how often do we like cower and hide away from God because we feel like we're not at our spiritually strongest. And I can't count how many times over the years I've like, steered clear of the adoration chapel um or stayed away from the sacraments because i felt like i wasn't doing well enough in my faith and so i just let myself stay down because i felt like i hadn't earned that or i felt like i wasn't doing my part and so i didn't want to like reap the benefits if that makes sense um and and i realized that there was a lot of pride involved in, in that and so um and we fail to like understand that the sacraments and the fruits of the church are put in place to help us and to carry us when we can't really carry ourselves. Um, and so my encouragement is to like those times where you can't fight for the faith or fight for your relationship with Christ for yourself. Um, let yourself be fought for. Let um, lean into the faith during those times and let Mary 
and the saints, especially our patrons, um, and ultimately Christ, you let them carry you and you let them carry your burden and you let them fight for you and you don't shy away um, and you don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and you just, you're not filled with enough pride that you're not willing to let, let somebody else fight for you. Um, our covenant at the end of the first part of our covenant, it talks about how we commit ourselves first and foremost to the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, and we do this through our devotions. We do this through our attendance of daily mass. Um, and we receive the Eucharist as frequently and as perfectly as possible. Um, and we go to the sacraments and we pray daily. And so, you know, we do those things to the best of our ability. Um, but that commitment is also like everything is two-sided. And so don't let yourself be down if you feel like you can't um, fight for your relationship with Christ or you can't fight for the faith. Uh, remember that it's, it's, you know, Christ is fighting for you too. And the saints are fighting for you too. And it's not, um, it's not all in you. Um, and then secondly, I think about our, our communal growth that Ali said households all have, and especially in Stella, our covenant to one another. Um, as much as we, especially like going through intensity, as much as you will be told, or you've already been told, um, that you need to fight for the girl next to you on your left and on your right, that works both ways. Like you also need to be fought for, and you need to recognize those times that, um, you don't have it in you to fight for the girl next to you and you're going to let her carry you. Um, everybody has these times. And if you say you don't, um, I would probably call you out on it because I like to call people out, but everybody has those times where you can't carry yourself or you can't continue fighting and that's okay. Um, I myself am going through like a very difficult time in life um, that has been filled with a lot of loss and sorrow. And um, like, I just feel so thankful for those in my life that have been able to carry me. And a lot of them have been my sisters and Stella Marie, um, like past or present. Um, one instance that like really stands out to me is um, my brother-in-law passed away in January and I've had to travel a lot since then. I mean, not right now, since we're all on stay-at-home orders, but like January through March, I was, I was traveling a lot to attend his different services in different parts of the country. And um, the last trip that I took was like mid-March. And it was really hard because my husband and my daughter weren't able to go with me. So I um, had to do that part of the trip alone, which was really difficult. Um, and I was flying home alone. It was late at night. And this is like when airports were starting to empty out because everybody was staying home and coronavirus had like just started spreading. And I just felt like completely awful. Like it was one of the lowest moments that I felt. And I was feeling um, very much like a failure. I was feeling like I wasn't able to be there for my family in the way that I needed to or my actual siblings in the way that I needed to let alone my household sisters or my friends that I keep in touch with. I was just feeling um, like I was like scrolling social media and I was like, oh my gosh, that's a sister that I love so much and I completely missed her birthday or I missed that she had a baby shower or I missed her engagement. Like I just like was, I just felt really bad on my, like just down on myself and felt like I was in a not good place. And so I, get, I got home from the airport that night, uh, super late and my husband had brought the mail in and um, I had like, two letters from two different household sisters and then a package from another household sister and just like encouraging things that like they knew all the things I was going through in my life and um basically all just assuring me that I was being prayed for and that they missed me and um you know that that they loved me and that I was being prayed for and I don't think these sisters will probably ever know how much my heart needed that um and it wasn't even like, I don't even know if it was the gesture of doing it or like the actual like gift or card that I received, but just like in that moment, I was reminded that like I was worthy of being carried when I couldn't carry myself, if that makes sense. I was very much reminded that like, um, that it's okay that I didn't have a lot in me or it's okay that I missed, you know, my friend's baby shower. Like I didn't really talk to her about it, but she had sent me this loving card and like, it's just a reminder that it, it's okay. Um, and if you're some people, like if you're like me, you can strive to be like a perfectionist and um, get really down on yourself when you fail in those ways. Uh, but to just have that little reminder that um, 
the sisterhood is so much stronger than that in our relationship with one another. 